right? When If I'm looking at her in a way of lustful intentions and desires, then that's an issue in itself. Like, we've never experienced sex. Yeah. If you think mm. about it, if sex was designed for marriage and that's the way God designed it, we've never experienced truly what sex is. That's we've only word. experienced sin. <laughs> for one person, it doesn't bother them whatsoever. For the next, it could really cause a lot of lust to come into their mind. Touching, straddling, laying in bed kissing versus standing up kissing, sleeping in the same bed, mm -hmm. cuddling and all of those things. So. Introduce myself? Yeah. Like, hi, I'm Kyan and I'm Kyle. Okay. okay. No, you're just my fiance and you don't say anything. <laughs> 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 kind of awkward. This is weird. Didn't know. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Cayenne. And I'm Kyle. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I love it. Okay, welcome to the channel. Hold on. Eye bookies. Oh, now I'm crying. Give you guys a heads up. There oh, we're going to keep going? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. There has been a lack of consistency in my uploads. We just moved, so I'm really struggling to adjust to getting a schedule back. So I think I'm Grace. on the, I think I'm up the, on the up, though. So hopefully yes. videos will be more consistent. But I know as we get close to the wedding, like, who knows? Yeah. And on a more important note, my toe is massive. Do you guys no, want to see this? No, they don't need to see your toe. My toe is massive. He got bit by like an ant or something. When we it is so out. red. I really want to show them. We are finally sitting down to do the long requested video about boundaries. So the whole video is going to be all about boundaries, mm. how we set mm. them, mm. our journey, and answering all your questions on it. Let's get it. With that being said, well, we're definitely going to pray into it, and then we'll do a little disclaimer after that. It's an important disclaimer for you to watch. Okay, do you want to pray? I would love to pray. Father God, we just thank you so much for this day, for the lives that you have blessed us with, for the opportunity and the privilege to just truly know who you are as our Heavenly Father and who we are as your children. Um, God, is just so amazing to be able to uh, be your hands and feet and represent you with our words, our actions, and our deeds. And we ask that you would help us to do that because we can't do it without you. Mm -hmm. So Holy Spirit, we just ask for open hearts and open minds. We ask that you would help us to surrender to you fully and allow you to speak through us. Um, we pray that you would just speak what it is that you want uh, to be said and that um, whatever isn't from you, Lord, we just pray would be discarded and thrown away. Mm -hmm. So God, we just thank you for this opportunity uh, to spend this time together glorifying you and we give you all the glory, the honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, hon. Of course. Wait, I didn't know it was a itch. <clears throat> okay. <sighs> Your hands are sweaty. Oh, that's clammy. <laughs> <laughs> Boundaries, I mean, I just thought it was just something that is like, okay, this is it. That's that. Moving on. And you just do it. Like clear cut, 100% universal, like <laughs> no questions or variations to it at all. Just like, yeah. So easy, but, but it's actually not. Not so much. <laughs> so that's what part of the reason why it took us so long to do this video because I really wanted to go through the whole experience before sharing about it. And I feel like now we're at a point where we are solid in what we've set for us and we know it works for us yeah. and god has taught us a lot on, along the way because it has not been perfect and we've learned a lot and it's a journey that god will most likely take you through uh you and your partner i for some people it might be clear cut from the beginning and then there's no trials tribulations but for us there was and we'll share all about that have discernment your answer on what your boundaries are going to be is not going to come from us that's going to come from god and the mm -hmm. holy spirit and your own convictions because we are not going to be perfect definitely I will, not I will the standard say, I, we are not the standard jesus is the standard i'm right. not going to sit here and tell you that i'm the standard and this is what everybody should do because no. and we're all different and <laughs> yeah. we all have different things that trigger us differently we all have different um 
things that tempt us differently and, and we have to be aware of ourselves mm -hmm. when you're making these boundaries. You can't look at somebody else and be like, oh, well, they did that, so I'm going to do that. It does not work that way. So really taking the time to, um, in a way, evaluate yourself and also um, your partner, you know, to notice, okay, well, this might not affect me, but this might affect her mm -hmm. or vice versa. Yeah. Um, and really taking the time to, to pray to God and ask him to make it clear to you, like, where is that line and how can we stay as far away from that line as possible? Yeah. And that was a huge convicting thing throughout the process. It's not... How close can we get to the line? It's how far we can stay mm -hmm. away from the line. Yeah. So if you're asking how far you can go, they say you're asking the wrong question. <laughs> right, yeah. Uh, Megan asked, what was your process of honoring your own individual boundaries and then creating them as a couple? Mm. So first, let's just get into the process mm. of things. The process. What were your personal boundaries getting into relationship? Yeah, so I would say my personal boundaries... They were very, to be honest, unclear because I've been out of a relationship for so long. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew certain things where it was like, um, I knew the feeling of lust. And my personal boundary was to stay away from that feeling of lust, right? Mm -hmm. And that kind of encompasses a lot. Um, but overall, it was if, you know, me looking at um, a woman and when I got in a relationship with her, it was Cayenne, right? When if I'm looking at her in a way of lustful intentions and desires Then that's an issue in itself and praise the Lord that he really helped me to Not feel lust from things that normally would have gotten me lustful when pre-Jesus uh, and in my past relationships yeah. Interesting. Um, Because when you know, I did get into this relationship with you I didn't really have any of those like lustful full thoughts or desires or like getting sucked into What's those a lustful traps. Thought? Like, like is anything like, that makes you want to have sex or something or Yeah, yeah. In a way of like like really like desiring like the sexual intimacy, desiring um, you know, even just like nudity and mm -hmm. you know anything that's really gonna like arouse me or get me going it's like that is the <laughs> what i don't know it's just funny. is that funny well that's know. true you know those thoughts um and god talks about that it's not necessarily just what you do but the thoughts you have in your head um and having those thoughts is just as bad as doing those those actions. Mm -hmm. So for me, that was really big is not to have those thoughts. Okay. Um, you know, and I'd be lying if I said it in the very beginning of the relationship, like they didn't try to come in. So when they started to come back in, I was like, oh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Not today, no, Satan. No, not no, today. No, no. <laughs> what about you? Oh, <laughs> I just pulled my hair. <laughs> well, that was sweet. Don't stop. <laughs> Anywho, this is going uh, great. Yeah, okay. Um, so how my here is it just me? <laughs> so my personal boundaries that I came to during my singleness was, I mean, nothing past kissing, um, like at all. So second base, third base, fourth home base were just out of the question. Get out of here. But I was comfortable with kissing. I did. Ha I do have friends who are not kissing until marriage too. So awesome. I mean, I consider that mm -hmm. for sure. Um, not very long did I consider that for, <laughs> but <laughs> it is an option and I think it's awesome. Yeah. It, especially if that's what you need to do to prevent you from going farther. And a lot of people who do have that boundary, it's the intention of it is because they know kissing will lead them to something else. It's not necessarily the act of kissing, but what it could like open up the door to. Right. So if that's a boundary you need to have. More power to you. Do it. Mm. One thing that I did do though, was I didn't want to kiss anybody unless I had confirmation that they were my husband or going to be my husband. Um, and so that was a lot easier for me because I didn't date. And that made it a lot easier for me not to kiss anybody. But I always held that in my heart. Like, I am not going to kiss anybody unless I know that that person's going to be my husband. Mm. Um, because if I don't know that, to me, it kind of felt like a way of dishonoring my husband in the future. Like, oh, yeah, I was just kissing these guys, but I knew that I wasn't going to marry them. And now that mm. you've come along, 
Like, great, you're here. Um, <laughs> I so, love that so much. Though. So that was something I shared with Kyle when we were on the cruise ship. So mm -hmm. we didn't kiss at all until we got that confirmation. And he was on board with that. Yeah, so, I and I think that's a great way if you are, you know, younger or you're just not at that point um, considering marriage right now. It's just a great way to keep yourself from becoming too, like, physically attached to someone and creating a bond with someone who's not going to be your husband. I mean, we were very blessed that we got confirmation within a week that we were going to get married because it would have definitely been more challenging if we were dating for like months mm. and just not kissing at all but and then what was our process creating boundaries as a couple i mean it was just that it was a process the process yeah <laughs> so we kind of knew that we both did weren't going to go past, past kissing. kissing that was just like a universal thing yeah uh, but then there's clear. like, you know, kissing, like pet kissing, and then there's like making out, and then there's all these little things in between you don't really think about, like touching, um, straddling, laying in bed kissing versus standing up kissing, um, sleeping in the same bed, mm -hmm. cuddling, and all of those things. So that's why it was a process, because as the relationship went on, we came up against those things, and we had to pray through them. Yeah. I think the biggest one that was a process was like making out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, laying down. Especially. Specifically, yeah. yeah. Um, it was, that was kind of like one of those things that I said is, um, you know, kind of like preventing the lustful thoughts from coming in and making out laying down um, made that more difficult. And mm -hmm. it was one of those things where it's just, it's, you're, you're too comfortable. You know, yeah. <laughs> you really, really are. Comfortable. You're just too comfortable. And then, you know, you just, it becomes more passionate mm -hmm. and then at that point it can just open up doorways and lead towards you know you falling into other temptations yeah um, during those moments there were times where we had to stop ourselves and say like okay that was like, too far like, too far and not even like too far like we crossed the line but like too far like we're way too close to crossing yeah. the line yeah exactly you know? we still did it anyway <laughs> Yeah, like yeah. we had those moments and we would still do it anyway. It was like a refining process yeah. that the Lord was putting us through though because he was giving us the conviction to stop. But then after that moment passed, it was like, okay, okay, you yeah. know, he, he slowly but surely made that conviction last longer and longer mm -hmm. until the point where it was like we were getting convicted before even doing it. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, we got to, I think this is a new boundary we got to set. We got to talk about yeah, it. We yeah, we got to talk about this. Like, do we just not make out at all? Or is there like specific locations that we shouldn't do it? And I guess the first conclusion we came to was like doing it in bed was like too. No, no. Yeah. Way, no, no. Way too much. Yeah. Um, so then we came to that. And then also there were times where I would like straddle and that was not good. No, no. Not good. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and I hope you guys can have some grace for yes, us. Yes, grace. <laughs> um, we share this in order to be helpful. Yeah, and um, honest. And honest. Transparent. And, yeah, transparent. And like I said, we, so are, not, <laughs> we are not perfect. <laughs> we are not perfect. No. Um, anyway, so those were two things that we were like, okay, those are two things we should not do. And then we kind of set that boundary. We had a little boundary talk. We set it. And then time went on and we started doing it again. So then we would be laying down and we'd start kissing and then we would be like, oh, we're oh, kissing. Yeah, we we're like, sit up. wait, let's <laughs> sit up and then it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord have mercy. Um, yeah, yeah, that's true. So, And then that conviction grew. Yeah, and so it's a refining process. So we had talked about the boundary and we had a lot of questions of like, okay, once, what happens if you cross a boundary? Like, how do you go back? What, mm. What's the process? Great question. Yeah. So this is what we did. We realized we were keep, we kept crossing a boundary we had set and we just didn't feel like we had integrity in it and that we were following through with it, but we still knew it needed to be there. Right. So we were at the park one day and I think I brought it up. It was a good talk. And we kind of just reframed like why we're doing this i think that was that a was huge, our issue that was a huge turning point our, our our issue with why we kept falling backwards was 
we felt like we were doing it for other people. Mm -hmm. And if you're really just doing it for other people, it's not like real to you. It's not something that like, it's not, it's not, it's not for you. So it doesn't, it's like not that big of a deal. I don't know. It was just weird. Yeah. Like the mentality so, we had behind it, mm -hmm. it wasn't strong. Yeah. So I knew eventually we would be making this video. And so when we were making my bound, like our boundaries, I was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to share this eventually. Right. So like, it kind of came about like, oh, well, would I be comfortable sharing that with people or, yeah. <laughs> and that's why it was, it felt like it was for other people. And yeah. we didn't really have a strong why for ourselves of like, why are we doing this? And I think that's a huge thing. Like I talk about in my get healthy with me videos. It's really just the intention behind it. Like mm. if you set a rule because you hate yourself or you care what other people think just out of a bad intention it's going to be really hard to keep that intention but if you set your intention because you personally want something and it's because you love yourself or you, you want to honor, honor yourself and honor god oh that's it, a good one it becomes a lot easier and yeah. enjoyable yeah there's a lot more uh, motivation behind your actions and we used to say in business all the time and i know people still do but when the why is big enough the how does not matter you know so as long as your why is big enough you'll be able to get through what it is you're trying to accomplish but if your why is not big enough then the how does matter then you get focused on the how and then you end up failing Mm -hmm. Right, it's just how it works. So yep. that's so what we ran into. We got focused on the how, mm -hmm. and then so we had a talk, and we just re reset our intentions. Um, we are doing this to honor God, to look forward to our, in our marriage, and mm -hmm. like create it to be more of an exciting thing that we get to do. Yeah. Also, that during that talk, we decided we were not going to have sleepovers because at that point, Kyle was would sleep um, over. And it didn't tempt us, so we were like, oh, okay, well, no big it's deal. just nice for him to, like, sleep over. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. It didn't tempt us, but we had to find a better reason to not do it. Because when we were just thinking about, oh, well, is this tempting or is it not tempting? No, it's not. Okay, well, then, you know, there's not much conviction to stay <laughs> with the boundaries so he would keep sleeping over. And it was at that talk where we're like, okay, that is something we want to experience when we're married. Yeah. Is like being able to sleep in the same bed. And it worked. Like it became so much more joyous. And every time he had to leave at night, it was like, oh, well, like, it, I just can't wait until we get married and we get to do this. Like it became more of an exciting thing. Mine was, oh, I just can't wait so I don't have to walk home or <laughs> ride my bike home late at night to go sleep in my bed. Yeah, it wasn't about... I'm just kidding. It wasn't <laughs> well, about... kind of. <laughs> but it's funny because you would think like now only being doors apart, it would be harder, but it's actually so much easier because yeah. of that as well, where it's like, all right, we're hanging out, watching TV, and then it's like, whatever we're doing, when, you know, now it's over, it's time to go to bed, okay, boom, I'm just going to go to my room, mm -hmm. you know, and that's been really cool. Yeah, um, especially practicing that beforehand when it was hard. Yeah. You know, where you had to like you were super tired and you had to like ride a bike home and stuff yeah. like that. Someone said, this is a silly question, but when in a relationship is it okay to cuddle? Never. <laughs> I think that's also like a very like personal decision because it, I know very. I've talked to men who said like cuddling does tempt them. Yep. Um, especially like spooning positions Yes. can be tempting. So... Again, it's a personal conviction. I know some people who will only hang out when they have a roommate around or something like that. Mm. So there's more accountability or they'll only hang out on a couch mm. and they won't like spoon or cuddle. We do cuddle and that has not been something we've been convicted about, at least not yet. Who knows? Like I said, it's a process, so maybe it will, but... Yeah. No, um, I, once again, it, it's, you have to know yourself. You know, you have to know yourself and your partner and you have to communicate about it and be honest about it and, and really take it to the Lord so he can give you that wisdom and discernment that you're looking for. Um, because it really is something that for one person, it doesn't bother them whatsoever. And for the next, it could really cause a lot of lust to come into their mind. And, mm -hmm. and that's, you don't want that. When it comes to something as, you know, as innocent as cuddling, because it, of what it can take, where it can take your mind and what it can lead you mm. to. It's just important to keep that in mind. Yeah. 
how do you guys enforce the boundaries you set and how did you hold each other accountable? Hmm. I think we kind of touched on that. And one of the biggest things I would say is really making the commitment to each other and to God. Mm -hmm. um, not just about us, but also bringing him into the mix. <sighs> you feel a lot more accountable when you have like talked to God about it and said, God, we're going to do this. Yeah. Like at the park, we literally were like, all right, like right now we make a commitment to each other and we make a commitment to you, God. Like we, we just... We're just like he was right there with us because he was and we just made a commitment to him as well. And, um, you know, like she said, she didn't want to kiss anybody before she knew it was her husband because she wanted to honor her husband. Right. And this is the same thing. You know, when you set these boundaries, you want to honor one another. Um, and when you bring God into it, you want to honor him. And it just, man, I, I would say that's the key right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are asking about emotional boundaries and spiritual boundaries. So we can't really speak a whole ton on this because yeah. within a week we knew we were going to get married. And I think once you enter engagement, it kind of changes because it's like, I know this is going to be my partner. Although I have heard of experience of people getting engaged and then ending things. But I mean... We really knew that we no. were going to get married. Yeah, for sure. And so kind of all of those like spiritual and emotional boundaries got lifted, I feel like, in the engagement process because you do have to unveil your heart and really let the other person in so they know like who you are and who they're marrying and what you struggle with and what triggers you and your past experiences and how they've impacted you because all that information is very useful in being in a relationship if the other person cares yeah because if they care they can act on that and Kyle now knows certain things that have happened in my past that trigger me or you know make me feel a certain way and mm -hmm. he now can respond to those moments yeah. With a better understanding. Yeah, and I think going off of that where it kind of gets lifted because the whole two become one process. You know, it's like we really are being sanctified and being brought together to become one. If you're having emotional, spiritual boundaries in place, and I may be totally wrong on this. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not really sure. And we, were, we looked at this and we were reading them like, what are emotional, spiritual boundaries <laughs> like within our relationship, right? Yeah. Like obviously we have them with other people for sure. Um, but in, in our relationship, coming together and getting married, um, yeah, we're just like, I don't think we have any. Yeah, we share, we've shared like a lot. We pray together. We share a lot of spiritual time together. So yeah. we haven't created it. And I think the reason why we feel so comfortable in all of that is because we're engaged and we are in the process of getting ready to become one. And we know we're getting married. Like that's the mm -hmm. thing. Like I know she's my partner for life. Mm -hmm. It's not like, okay, we're engaged and we'll see how it goes. And maybe I could get out next week or next month, <laughs> you know, before we get married. Like, no, Yeah. it's like, you know, from God, we know. So I could see in a relationship, if you're not a hundred percent certain why mm -hmm. you would have those boundaries up. Yeah. Um, but if you are and you're on the same page, you know, for me, it's hard to see why you would have them up. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I have friends who have been in relationships where they didn't know they were going to marry the person and they didn't have those emotional boundaries and it ended in a lot of hurt. Yeah, so I dangerous. know there's definitely purpose in emotional and spiritual boundaries. I'm actually going to ask one of my friends if she would want to share on it because she definitely probably has a better understanding because that's not something we have run into in our relationship, but I know she has. So hopefully she will come do a video with me. So stay tuned for a whole video on emotional boundaries. Um, <laughs> and if you have any thoughts on this, drop it in the comments. Yeah. I, I would love to see it. We would love yeah. to get, you know, a different perspective on it as well. Mm -hmm. You have physical boundaries while making out his stand his hands stay on your back etc we were just talking about this like i mean we do we do we have touching boundaries like sure you know, he doesn't touch me in no. certain areas no. like my boobs or my butt really Same um, that for the wedding and also we we're gonna say like we don't really make out anymore it's so weird <laughs> it's actually really funny yeah and it's like not in a way that like we don't like desire each other mm -hmm. but yeah like we we're making out and then we set the boundaries. Then it got passionate. Mm -hmm. And then we set the boundaries. And then it just kind of like died off. Died off. 
<laughs> that might sound bad, you know, because it's like... Well, if you've ever tried to make out standing up or sitting down, it's just not <laughs> as enjoyable. It's really not. So I think that's a huge part, which it, it's like, that's why doing it in bed, you're just too comfortable. Way too comfortable. So like yeah. now it's like the only time we would do it is if we were like standing or like sitting and it's like... I don't know. It's just your back not, starts to hurt. Your neck starts to hurt. It's not so. enjoyable. So I think that is honestly one of the big reasons why we just really don't make out hardly at all. No. Um. <laughs> so anyway, that boundary is very effective, and it's She's even. She's a really bad kisser. <laughs> and it's taking us to another <laughs> level. <sighs> do you get changed in front of each other? No. No, we don't do that. No. 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 Question. Somebody asked how to start a conversation on boundaries um, because I know fear can get in the way of having that. You just got to be clear on your intentions and what you really want. It's important. Boundaries, this conversation, open communication is super important. Like she came up to me actually and she was like, hey, like I think we really need to talk about boundaries. Perfect, mm -hmm. right? Great way to do it. Have that confidence in that is key, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. I think once, I mean, the cool thing is if you set your boundaries before you're in a relationship that makes it really easy because before you even start dating them you can tell them what they are like your personal boundaries are and if they are in agreement you know and they know and it's kind of all discussed before you guys get too attached because trying to set boundaries like later down the line it can be harder mm -hmm. Um, because you might try to set them and then the other person's like, I didn't sign up for this. Like, this is not. Right. And they might not have that conviction. And yeah. And that could be troublesome. So I think setting them for yourself, at least having a general idea. Obviously, like we said, it's a process and that might change. But having like a good general idea of what you want your boundaries to be and just sharing that with the person before you even get in a relationship. And if that's not an option for you, like if you're already in a relationship and you want to bring those up. I think just like pray about it, ask God for the confidence to do it, and just know that like boundaries is a fun thing. <laughs> I mean, it's literally about honoring God. So that sounds like fun, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think once you get to a point where you realize like this is a good thing, this is honoring God, I'm excited to execute these until I'm married, then it gives you more confidence <laughs> to talk about. Yeah, and remember, God's with you throughout it all. You know, he's gone before you, so put your faith and trust in him, and he'll help you through it. He'll set your path straight. What is the furthest both of you have gone? Well, we both well, have born Well, we're born again virgins. So. Yeah. Um, so we've gone all the way, but just no. not with each other. Born again virgins. I'm a virgin. I'm a virgin. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus, yeah. <laughs> for your grace and your mercy. <laughs> uh, forgive us, Father, we did not know. <laughs> How do you live in the same house and not have sex? It's actually quite simple. Yeah, you stick to the first boundaries <laughs> and you just carry them over into the new living situation. Yeah. And you um, honor God and one another. Yeah. You know, And have the end goal in mind. I mean, we don't, we want to save that for marriage. Yeah, we can't wait to have sex. Yeah, it's going to be amazing, but... That's for marriage. Yeah. You know, and, and it's I think. It's going to be so special and great. Yeah, there's there's a reason why God created it the way He did. Gotta marriage. Trust that. Right. Marriage is, is a covenant, and, you know, that's when two become one, and, and the sexual um, intimacy, having sex, is an act of two becoming one. It's an act of um, worship. Right. It's, it is. It's an act of worship, and it's something that, um, you know, we want to honor our Creator, our God, with the way He created things. Um, you know, by following the way he created it. So mm -hmm. one thing I wanted to say that really helped me as a born again, and also like some of my friends who were struggling with that, who have had sex before, because they're like, oh, like I really want to have sex, or like sex is so great, um, and they talk a lot about their sex life, like they know. But what I have to remind them is like we've never experienced sex. Yeah. If you think mm. about it, if sex was designed for marriage and that's the way God designed it, we've never experienced truly what sex is. That's we've only word. experienced sin. Mm. <laughs> so if you're like obsessed with your sexual history or just like talking about, you know, how it used to be, 
just remind yourself, okay, that's what it was when I was sinning. So I've never really even experienced sex in like God's holiness and in marriage and the way he designed it. So really I've never had sex. I've had never had sex the way it was created. Amen. Um, and if you really hold on to that, a lot of your sexual, like a lot of people hold on and like, oh, well, I've already had it. It's like, okay, you might have already had sex, but it was sin. You never, like, there is a reason to save this for marriage because you haven't, it's still something new that you get to experience once you're, once you're in marriage. So, Amen. I don't That's know. So I, think that, I think that really helps yeah. um, just to consider. That's powerful. That's powerful right there. Rewind this. Watch that again. <laughs> Oof. Come on, girl. How do you stick to your boundaries in steamy moments? LOL. <laughs> Please keep this anonymous. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Be careful of the steamy moments. Yeah, don't create the steamy don't moments because that's moments. what we were doing. We right. were getting caught up in the steamy moments. The steamy moments. And we would have, we would have, God would give us enough willpower to stop ourselves yeah. in those moments. What we realize is like we shouldn't even be creating that kind of environment that we need, to, like that we could risk going further or crossing it. So yeah, as much as it sucks. Trust me, it'll it'll get better once you agree to it, but you have to not have those steamy moments. So, yeah. like, we don't have passionate makeouts. No. Um, save the steamy moments. Save the steamy, save the steamy, steamy moments. moments. A lot of people just asking, like, how do you handle mess-ups and mistakes? I think repentance is huge. And, like, if you think about repentance, it is the act of turning 180 degrees in the other direction. <laughs> And so good. if you mess up, it really depends on your personality because some people take advantage of it. Because I want to say, like, give yourself grace because when you do mess up, the devil will use condemnation to keep you stuck. So if you are genuinely hurting over your sin, then I trust that you're not going to take advantage of God's grace. Repent. You've already received you know, you know you're already forgiven, but the act of repentance is huge in really humbling yourself. And like I said, repent is 180 and opposite direction. So in those situations, it's like, okay, what do we need to do to literally turn around from this sin? Mm. And it's like, okay, I need to set new boundaries. Okay, we need to fast from touching for a week or kissing for a week or for a month or whatever it needs to be. Like we definitely talked about doing like kissing fasts. Um, if we need to. The only person who is designed to be perfect was Jesus and we are not going to be perfect and we are going to mess up but you can't let the devil like condemn you for that because a lot of times that will keep you in the shame and guilt and it will cause you to keep sinning but when you really receive God's grace and understand what Jesus did for us on the cross it's a lot it's a lot more powerful of a place to be like, okay, Jesus died for me to overcome these sins. I'm going to take advantage of his blood because it did not like go to waste. And I'm going to receive his forgiveness and his power and his Holy Spirit. And I'm going to keep pressing on and we're going to get better. Amen, baby. Come on, preach. So good. Yeah. I mean, no condemnation for those who are in Christ, right? So if you're really in him, you shouldn't be feeling condemned. Um, but at the same time, don't take advantage of his grace. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, uh, somebody called it hyper grace one time. And it's like, oh, well, I have all the grace from Jesus, so I could just continue doing this and it's fine. It's like, no, if that's what you're doing, you're not feeling um, any conviction on that, you probably don't know Jesus. Sorry. Um, because he, he will make that clear to you and he will burden your heart in a way of feeling... Um, the conviction that is needed to make that change and to repent. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was so good. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and then just one more note on that is if you are not feeling conviction over these things, just get to know Jesus more. Like we don't want to say like you need to have these convictions because over time in my journey becoming a Christian, they came slowly. Mm -hmm. Like I was like, oh, like, I'll think about saving myself for marriage. And then, like, six months later, I had sex. And then after I had sex, all of a sudden, I would be, like, crying 
and I was like, whoa, where did this come from? Apparently, I really do want to save myself for marriage. Yeah. It's just a process. So these convictions might not be there right now. But as you get to know Jesus, he's going to give you that heart for them. Exactly. Um, so we're not here to like condemn you if you don't have these convictions. I know for me, it was a process. It happened over time, slowly but surely. I was like, oh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. And it wasn't anything I did. It's really just Jesus. Absolutely. And that's <laughs> so. it. That's all it is. Just get to know Jesus more and, and that's it. You know, he gives you the wisdom, the discernment, the convictions, the understanding, the direction. He makes it clear. Mm -hmm. um, and if you feel like you're lacking in that, just get to know him more. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful part about a relationship. We can yeah. grow in it. Mm. So good. We hope you guys enjoyed it. Mm. Uh, if you guys have any other questions or you want like another video about this, let us know. Drop we tr we try to cover as much as we can. Um, yeah. All right. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Please share this video with a friend that really helps um, support us. So if you think this video is helpful at all, feel free to share. Love you guys. Bye. Bye. I'm Kyle. I'm Kyle. <laughs>